Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome to this week's Kafir Middle East update. It's the week of July 23rd. As we jump in, uh, first, remember, grab the PDF PowerPoint. You can get it from our website at holygroundexplorations.com or it should be a link on the YouTube channel itself. But this, there's more information in the PDF PowerPoint than we have time for for this short video. So we always start with our news bites. COVID, 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 COVID. When will this end? Will we ever return to any kind of normalcy? Uh, I wish I had good news, but as a person that can't get back to Israel and we're longing to, it is just a major source of frustration. This Delta variant has spread across Israel. Um, cases have doubled within a week. And it seems like it's uh, hitting both vaccinated and unvaccinated as well. Israel has once again postponed reopening to tourism in any way. And so, again, what can we say? This is, uh, this is a pandemic. Uh, I'm, I'm often reminded of what the Bible says concerning the end of days. Um, there are going to be these sort of things. Jesus said, watch, don't be deceived, pray. Uh, COVID is ravishing still, not only our world, but specifically Israel. So remember to pray. Um, there's news out of Israel that there are th currently in the laboratory, it's not yet finalized, but there are three existing drugs that fight COVID, Israeli drugs, with almost 100% success in the lab work up to this point in time. It's hard to hold out hope. Once again, we've seen that the vaccine is not able to keep people from um, this new variant. And then there's just that massive debate, right and left, uh, value, vax, not vax, what good is it? Is it true that if you are vaccinated and you get COVID that it's not as strong as whatever? I don't know. But this is what's taken place and Israel remains closed at this time. Uh, again, longing to get back, not just because I want people to understand the geopolitical side of the Israel of today, but it's my experience that Jesus meets people in the land. And we have been blessed close to 50 times to be able to take groups to Israel where they've been able to connect with Jesus. That's what I long to do. So please keep that in your prayers. Um, Tisha B'Av took place this last week, last Sunday. One of the Arab parties of the Knesset that's part of this change government condemned the fact that um, there were 1,600 Jews that were able to visit the Temple Mount. Keep this in mind. The coalition government a portion of them condemned Jews, Israelis, from, for going up to the temple site to mourn the loss of the first and second temples. I, I've got more on that in a moment, but it's a head scratcher, right? And we'll talk a little bit more, not only of what took place on Tisha B'Av, but this newfound change government. Well, this next major article important, these events took place this week in Israel. I simply called this, So It Begins. The IDF last week fired or air, had strikes in uh, Syria, that border of the Golan, again, entrenched Hezbollah, um, arm depots from Iran to Hezbollah 
in, outside of Aleppo, and, and Israel's made it clear, we're not going to stand for it. And so they struck, and in reaction to that, there were two rockets that were fired from Lebanon. And that's why I said, so it begins. Uh, the IDF forces retaliated to these rockets that were shot from Lebanon, landing in the northern Galilee. One was taken out by an iron dome and the other in an open field. Uh, but the IDF has gone on record to say, and by the way, there were no injuries whatsoever or damage reported. But again, it is a red line. No rockets from the north being fired into Israel will be tolerated. Unlike what takes place in Gaza, Israel has made it clear through various channels. If Hezbollah launches any kind of rockets from the north into Israel, we will strike. And if it escalates, no more Hezbollah, no more, unfortunately, Lebanon. So this is out there, this has taken place, and it was this week. So again, we'll have to wait and see if that was it, if, if Israel made its point, or if there'll be any other kind of leakage. Now, last Monday, um, U.S. President Joe Biden welcomed Jordan's King Abdullah to the White House. That was on Monday. Among things that they were discussing, obviously the Middle East, um, two-state solution, Temple Mount. Um, I, I just find it noteworthy that with everything that's going on in the Middle East, that it was Jordan's King Abdullah to be the first leader to visit the Biden White House. No Israel, Jordan. Uh, I have a lot of feelings, as you know, about this so-called potential two-state solution. Um, I, I think it's a myth. I don't see how it can possibly happen. The Temple Mount, as we'll go into here, is an absolute mess. But why start with Jordan? Well, let's take a look now at the Temple Mount. And again, back to this coalition government, this change government. Um, according to a member of the Knesset, Mansour Abbas, his statement simply is this, the Jews have no right to access the Temple Mount. He goes on to say that the Alaska Mosque, the Temple Mount, is pure, the purely the right of Muslims, and no others have a right to even be there or to visit. This is a member of the Knesset, he didn't stop there. He went on to say not only the Temple Mount, but also the Kotel or the Western Wall, as you would know it, exclusively the rights of the Muslims. And so the question within this change government, how, how is Naftali Bennett or how is Lapid going to respond to this? Well, this is what we know. Yer Lapid, uh, he sparked criticism this week for claiming that the Western Wall, not the Temple Mount, is the holiest site in Judaism. Uh, he, he went on because of this incident in Tisha B'Av, on Tisha B'Av, he went on to say that Jews have visitation rights at the Temple Mount, but Muslims have the freedom to worship. A Jew who wants, and this is his words, a Jew who wants to pray can do so at the Western Wall. It is the holiest place for Jews, he said. I mean, even this guy, even this Gentile 
knows that the Western Wall is just a retaining wall. The holiest site? Give me a break. The holiest site of Judaism is the temple. On the Temple Mount. Not exactly sure where it is, but both the first and the second temple. And so Lepid saying that, hey, the holiest spot for Judaism is the retaining wall is ridiculous. It's crazy. But then it goes on another step because he is the foreign minister, soon to be and in two years or whatever, if it lasts that long, the prime minister. But the current prime minister, Naftali Bennett, who is religious, whose party is supposedly on the right, he made the assertion, again, to should be obvious the background, that Jews should have the freedom of worship at that site. But after everything took place, he later tempered his claim and said that the Jews don't have the freedom to worship at that site, but to visit that site. This is the Israeli government backing away once again. Uh, I, I don't have words. Let me just conclude this week's update with this article that I'm just going to quote to you about this government, this change government. It says, it's not a question of right versus left, nor is it a question of the opposition leader Netanyahu versus Bennett and Lapid. It's a question of superficiality versus professionalism. This is a government in which the prime minister is not really the prime minister, and the decision makers are not really the decision makers. In this government, all the members are work walking on eggshells. Any remark made out of place, any inaccurate statement threatens to bring down this entire house of cards. This is a paralyzed government, which has found itself in a debacle, but rather has brought on all of its troubles itself. It's whitewashed the price that it will pay for the, its establishment. And with the help of its emissaries in the media and Twitter, social media, it continues practically unhindered and will inflict damage on a near daily basis. This government will not last. It is a sham. That's from Israel. That's not my words. That is what's bubbling up. And so we conclude with this comforting reminder, God is not caught off guard. God is in control. I believe that. That's why I can sleep at night. I know that God holds Israel in the palm of his hands. I know this end time scenario has all taken place. God has seen it from start to finish, the beginning and the end. And he is in control of it all. I'm good with that. How about you? God bless you and shalom. And I hope to see you next week.